Thank you to our listeners and viewers. That was the beautiful um, presentation Listen, of the Holy there's Quran. There's a good chance. We have just witnessed. Um, in, in light of today's program, um, as we have seen the recitation of the Holy Quran, today our focus is around the life of Muhammad, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. This will be an introduction by Islam Ahmadiyya, which we will see a video later today. Sorry, we don't have an interactive session today, but we will endeavor to um, highlight some of the uh, discussions we will have around the Holy Prophet Muhammad. And then we will listen to a beautiful um, Arabic. Uh, it's it's a poem written in the praise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. And this was written by the founder of Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, and who we believe to be the promised Messiah and Mahdi uh, for the latter days for people of mankind. But just before we go into today's program, I just want to highlight the biblical prophecies about Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Allah says in the Holy Quran, those who follow the messenger, the immaculate one, whom they find mentioned in the Torah and the gospel, which are with them. This is the Holy Quran, chapter 7, verse 158. No doubt there are many prophecies regarding the advent of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him in the Bible. But in the above quoted Quranic verse, Torah and the Gospels are especially mentioned because Moses and Jesus were prominent figures among all Israelite prophets. Muslim took upon the source of Bible as the holy and divine and its medium as truthful men. And here in a verse of Al-Quran which confirms this statement, Say ye, we believe in Allah and what has been revealed to us, and what was revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and his children, and what was given to Moses and Jesus, and what was given to all other prophets from thy Lord. We make no difference between any of them, and to him we submit ourselves. Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse 137. Of course, Muslims regard the Christian scriptures as interpolated, but interpolation still implies retention of some original truths. The principle that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, testifies to the truth of all previous revelations, furnishes a strong foundation for harmony between the various religions of the world, as well as for the unity of the human race. The fact that all of the foregoing Prophet testified to the truth of Prophet Muhammad wasallam constitutes a yet stronger testimony to the truth of Islam and the unity of religion. I will come further to the discussions on this one, but um, before we um, start our next program, um, this is again touching on the life of the Holy Prophet, Muhammad, may peace and blessing of, of Allah be upon him. This is an introduction by Islam Ahmadiyya. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
एक रात मफासद की वो तीरा उतारा जो नूर की हर मशल जुलमात पेवार It was an era of darkness that had prevailed over the whole of Arabia. No one was safe or content, and people lived in a state of daily chaos. The Kaaba that Allah had once destined for His own worship was now filled with idols, almost one for each day of the year. Battles based on feuds between tribes resulted in years of slaughter and innocent deaths. To be born a woman was considered a sin. Every day you could hear the cries of baby girls buried alive because their entry into the world was considered a curse on the family. Even those who did survive were doomed for life. Forced into marriage to corrupt men, they were denied all human rights. Even in widowhood, they would be shunned by society. Gambling, exploitation, deceit, dishonesty, all were embedded in the everyday lives of Arabian society. At this time of darkness and gloom, when the poor, the slaves, and the needy would look up to the skies and cry out, Will no one come to help us? Allah had mercy on them and sent the one who would bring great change to mankind. And so begins the most remarkable chapter in human history. Okay. 
लाई जब शान खुदाराई इबलीस हुआ हारत चौपट हुआ काम तो हीद की यूरश ने दर छोड़ा ना बाम उसका Somewhere in the household of the honorable family of Quraysh slept Amina, a bereft widow carrying the child of her late husband Abdullah. She was from the noble tribe of Banu Zohra and he was the son of Abdul Muttalib. Merchants by profession, Abdullah often had to travel to neighboring countries. On his return from a trip to Syria, he fell ill and died in Medina leaving behind his newly married bride and unborn child as she slept allah showed her an amazing dream a dream not just concerning her future but the future of mankind in this dream it was pitch dark and suddenly a brilliant bright light emerged from her bosom and spread all over the world it was extremely significant for it bore glad tidings for the whole of mankind the pitch dark in her dream symbolized mankind that was bereft of spiritual light civilization that had spread its branches across the world now stood threatened for survival for it was rotten to the core the light that she saw emerging from her bosom was muhammad peace and blessings of allah be upon him the son she would give birth to muhammad the apostle of god whose qualities and grand stature no one else in history would remotely match and was destined to be the most powerful instrument of god for the revival of mankind i abogani jisko jo apni dua pahunchi dar ke faqeeron ke bhi bakht samarai zahir hua ho jalwa jab us se nigah palti khud husne nazar apna sa chand nikharai shortly after her dream of light hazrat amna gave birth to a baby boy hazrat muttalib the grandfather was given the great news of the blessed birth and the child was named muhammad which means immensely praised to give thanks for the birth of his grandson hazrat muttalib carried baby muhammad around the kaaba and so the holy prophet of islam was born from then on allah bestowed his benevolence on all those who touched his messenger one of the first was his nurse halima as was customary she was employed to care for the baby till he was about 4 years old coming from an impoverished background her situation changed to one of great prosperity as she raised the baby prophet in his formative years achash me khizan dida khul khul ke sama badla ef 
فطرت خابیدا اٹھ اٹھ کے بہار آئی نبیوں کا امام آیا اللہ امام اس کا سب تختوں سے اونچا ہے تختالی مقام اس کا Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was subjected to trial from a very early age. When he was only six, his mother passed away, and then, after a few years, he lost his grandfather too. Alone again, he was put into the care of his uncle Abu Talib. He was a shy, quiet child who would be deeply affected by the poverty which he saw on his travels with his grandfather. He grew up into a man renowned for his kindness to relatives and his care for the poor and the needy. In Meccan society he was known as Siddiq, the truthful, and Amin, the honest. His fair dealings made him well known amongst the trade community in particular. This is how Hazrat Khadija came to hear of him. Despite being 15 years his senior, she was so impressed by his character that she sent a proposal of marriage to him. Allah ki شریعت کی نکلی وہ دلہن کر کے جو سولا سنگھار آئی اترا وہ خدا کو ہے Muhammad believed in one God and was saddened by the idol worship which was rife in Mecca. He often retreated to a mountain cave called Hira where he could be alone with his Lord and sometimes several days would pass before he would return home. There, he would engross himself in prayer and meditation and as a result, he experienced many dreams. <laughs> When he was 40 years old, an extraordinary incident took place in the cave. With the command of God, the angel Gabriel visited the prophet and said, Recite. Muhammad replied that he did not know how to recite. The angel insisted and at last made the prophet recite the following verses. Recite thou in the name of thy Lord who created. Created man from a clot of blood. Recite and thy Lord is the most beneficent who taught man by the pen taught man what he knew not. This is the first revelation that the Prophet received. It has tremendous meaning. It commands him to proclaim the oneness of God, 
the creator of all men. When the Prophet received this revelation, he was full of fear of the responsibility which God had decided to place on his shoulders. Hurrying home, he narrated the incident to his wife Khadija, saying, Weak man that I am, how can I carry the responsibility which God proposes to put on my shoulders? Khadija replied, God is witness. He has not sent you this word that you should fail and prove unworthy and that he should then give you up? How can God do such a thing while you are kind and considerate to your relations? You help the poor and the forlorn and bear their burdens. You are restoring the virtues that had disappeared from our country. You treat guests with honor and help those who are in distress. Can you be subjected by God to any trial? This was the first of a long series of revelations spread over 23 years to descend on the master of all mankind, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Thank you to our listeners and viewers. I hope that was really insightful to understand um, the life of the Holy Prophet from his early age and how he went through some trials and tribulations and some of the atrocities uh, that the Makkans faced during the uh, early years of establishment uh, uh, in, in the region where they had a God for every uh, day, so 365 days a year, and the whole prophecy around Muhammad coming and you know promoting that there's only one God and you need to worship only one God only. Uh, further on, um, I will discuss the um, prophecies that are mentioned about the Holy Prophet in the Bible. But before that, I would just like to again give us um, our information who we are. We are the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. We believe in the promised Messiah, the Mahdi, uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ, uh, that he has, that Advent has taken place. If you have any questions or concerns regarding our program today, please feel free to reach out to us on 0800 letter Y Islam I S L A M or info at Ahmadiyya.org.nz or you can contact me the local president of Ahmadiyya Muslim community Tashriq Hanif on 0275365654. We're happy to take any feedback comment and endeavor to answer any questions for you. Further on um uh, in terms of the fact uh, that all the foregoing Prophet testify to the truth of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, continues a yet stronger testament to the truth of Islam and unity of religion. Moses prophesied about Hazrat Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. In Deuteronomy 18, 18 chapter 18, verses 17 and 19, uh, Moses says, or Moses prophesied, And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them that I shall command him, that it will come to pass that whosoever will hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. I will require it of him. The foretold prophet in his prophecy was not Jesus salam, or no other Israelite prophet, because none of them ever claim to be the prophet prophesied here. We read in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 19 and 21, that in the time of Jesus, the Jews were expecting the advent of three prophets. Firstly, Elias, the second Christ. Thirdly, uh, firstly, Elias, secondly, Christ. Thirdly, a prophet of such universal fame that in their case, no other specification was thought necessary. 
the prophet was enough to convey what was meant Jesus claimed to be the Christ and he regarded John the Baptist at Elias. Matthew chapter 11 verse 14 chapter 17 10 to 13. Further he prophesied about his second advent in the last day when true faith would disappear from the earth. Luke chapter 18 verse 8. So I thought to just give you a brief highlight on the uh, biblical references that talks about the Holy Prophet Muhammad and his second coming about the promised Messiah in the latter days. But today's focus is more around Holy Prophet Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, who started Islam, uh, the Holy Quran was revealed unto him, it took 23 years, and he is the chief of all the Prophets. So on that note, uh, we will play a poem in praise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, but peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And this poem was written by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, the promised Messiah alayhi salam, the Mahdi, whom we believe, or the advent of the second coming of Jesus Christ has taken place in his form. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian, the promised reformer, the Messiah, the Mahdi. So please enjoy this short poem. Ya Rabbi salli ala nabiyyika daiman Fi hazihi dunya wa basim sani Wallahi inna muhammadan karida Fatin wa bihil وصول بسدة السلطان ها محمد ہی کا رتبہ ہے بلند باد از خدا آپ کے ذریعے سے ہی ہوتا ہے وصل کبریا یا رب بائی گاڈ دی ہولی پرافیٹ محمد is certainly like the Prime Minister in his spiritual relation to Almighty God. And it is through him alone that there can be access for anyone to the threshold of the King, Almighty God. <laughs> وَبِهِ يُبَاغِ الْعَسْكَرُ الرُّحَانِ آپ کی حسطی پہ نازا ہر مقادس پاک باز لشکر روحانیہ بھی آپ پہ کرتا ہے ناز یا رب he is the pride of every purified and holy person. And the spiritual troops of Allah also cherish him and take pride in him. چہرے میں نظر آتا ہے نور کردگار تیرے سب آساف میں حسن ازل ہے آشکار یا رب The presence of Allah, the protector, is reflected in the blessed face of the Holy Prophet. In his entire manner, and moral conduct sparkles with the same characteristic magnificence. <laughs> No doubt 
doubt it is Muhammad who is the best of all creation. He is the essence and vital force of the elect of God. بڑھ کر ہے تیرا قرب یار خیر پر نا کے زما پر ہے فضیلت کا مدار یارا He is preferred over everyone who is front raking and has achieved nearness to Allah and remember that excellence of spiritual rank is because of his virtues not because of priority in time. The Holy Prophet of Islam possesses superiority over all creation due to his spiritual excellence, his elegance and grace, and his majesty and his ever fresh and spiritually refreshing heart and soul. موتی کی ماند عبدار یا رب I found him to be the ocean of truths and guidance and I saw him sparkle like a pearl لِلَّهِ دَرُكَ يَا إِمَامَ الْعَالَمِ أَنْتَ السَّبُوقُ وَسَيِّدُ الشُّجْعَانِ May Allah bless you, O leader of the world. You rank the highest and are the bravest leader. Of the brave. <laughs> Then, O son of guidance, the holy prophet, you rose on the horizon for their benefit, so that you may illuminate them with the divine light emanating from your glowing face. لم أخل في لحظ ولا في يعني أي مري باغي مسرت ما تري رخ برفدا ايك لمها بي نهي دل ياد سي تري جدا my garden of spiritual delights. I am ever so absorbed in your fond thoughts 
and from the remembrance of your blessed face. I am not free, even for a moment or a split second. Thank you to our listeners and viewers. Um, I hope Mega you enjoyed the now. beautiful Grab the popcorn poem for Mega Night with was, John Wick, uh, Chapter 4, out now. JB, just uh, now. Um, as we go into um, the closure of today's program, um, we will be looking at this part two of mm. the um, um, the life of Holy Prophet Muhammad. So that will be basically just concluding today's session but i'm just mindful of time we may not be able to cover the full video but in light of today's program just a quick update around the warapa refugee settlement uh, details um, we do have close to 56 members now living in warapa the former refugees it's been a challenging year uh, due to covid uh, but we are ever so grateful to the uh, New Zealand uh, government, um, Red Cross. And I do want to thank Michael and his team here at Aero FM mm. who give us this opportunity to be here every Saturday to um, offer the message mm. of peace. Maybe we will park that video for next uh, session, but um, again, it's just in line with, uh, you know, what's the true purpose of life or the true purpose of a mankind as muslims um, we are the true we believe that we have found the truth in the promised messiah salam, that is hazrat mirza gulam ahmed of Qadian from india we have evidence that we looked at in the biblical history about who will start Islam and that was foretold so many thousands of years ago that Holy Prophet Muhammad will appear in the latter day and he will be that one person that will change the entire mankind. If we look at the history of Islam there were some really challenging days earlier. There were some days where people went through a lot of hardship if we look at the history of Islam, uh, especially the tribe of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, people were living in a very dark age. There was a bit of cannibalism, there was a bit of a hooliganism. Anything you can think of that people had in those days, um, there were times when, when uh, girls were born and they were buried alive in the in Arabia. There was a big influence of you know having a boy in the family that was quite a normal practice uh, during that time. That's when the prophecy came and that came down to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that he will be that core founder of that religion that will abolish all sorts of unnecessary activity and i look at today's world we still encounter a lot of unrest around the world why is that why is there that people in this so much civilized society the superpowers of this universe the likes of united states of america we have China, we have Russia, we have Ukraine, we have all sorts of country that are still fighting to show power and, and greed. People fail to understand the importance of one's life and the one's uh, purpose of life in this universe. The whole creation of mankind was to worship God and service to humankind and that was the whole reason 
that God Almighty has mentioned in the Holy Quran, if it wasn't for the Holy Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, I would not have created this universe. So let's just ponder on that little note. Why did God say that? God went and created a perfect exemplar for the human race. And that human race we see today is us. That human race that talk, talks about is us. And he created or oh, he brought Muhammad sallallahu into this world, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, that I want that one human that can be that perfect example for everybody, that one person that will lead mankind to its utmost pristine purity in a form where they will serve, they will firstly worship God, God and only one God, and be service to human beings. How he treated his wives. He was that one individual that lifted the whole womanhood in this universe. He was that one person who gave the highest authority to women in this universe, where he said, yes, women can be on the level playing field with men. And now we can see that society, it's practiced among a lot of faith, that ladies are coming up, not just in the secular world, but in the spiritual world as well. So he gave women that right, that yes, they have the right to voice, they cannot be suppressed in this day and age. He was the most compassionate one towards children. He would be so kind, if I can give one example, during prayers, that if he used to hear a child crying during prayer, he would cut short his prayers so that the child can get that nurture from the mom so that he is in his own little comfort. There were times when little children used to make a lot of noise around the mosque area and he still used to be so kind and humble to them. There were occasions when the Holy Prophet Muhammad used to pray and his grandkids used to climb all over his shoulders. But at no point he showed any form of negligence towards them. He would still embrace them, cuddle them, make them feel happy, and gave the most appropriate uh, guidance and love he could give to any children. He was one of those individuals who helped women with household chores. He would wash the dishes, he would amend the clothes, he would sweep the house. The, any little chore you can think of, Muhammad would most humbly do it for his wives. This is such a common practice that we all are trying to employ in this day and society. If we look at our world today, if I look at New Zealand as a society today, we are challenged in every step. Currently, we are faced with ever-challenging inflation. But those simple practices just come along so nicely. We are a men and women are trying to make the livelihood, to make their lives comfortable for their family. Both husband and wife work. They both put together a lot of effort to do things together. They face the uh, challenges together. The wife is cooking, the husband is washing dishes, uh, the husband is giving that love and respect to the children when the wife may be busy um, tidying up the house. So these examples were already set by our beloved Prophet Muhammad, when peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. But it was not practiced and it took years and hundreds of years. Now if I can sit back and reflect of some of his teachings, we can see it in this world. We can witness it. And as Ahmadiyya Muslim community, as I've mentioned before, we believe we have believed in the second advent of uh, Jesus Christ coming in the form of Promise Messiah, salam, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian. And he has absolutely 
led the life of our Holy Prophet Master, Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and peace and blessings of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He has come and revive the lost Islam that we have seen. In this day and age, the media protests so much negativity about Islam. But no, the religion that Muhammad brought, Islam literally means peace. Peace and obedience to the will of God. So, Islam is a very peaceful society. As I've mentioned earlier, we have a former refugee settlement program that's happening in the Wairarapa. We have 56 members here. We have our center here at Aero FM building that uh, I'm ever grateful to the Master and Land and Trust. They have given us the opportunity to practice our faith freely. And we do hold very much regular programs uh, on a weekly basis. We do our prayers every Friday. So please, if you want to learn more about our religion, come and see us at, uh, at our Aero FM building. We're on level one. You will find us on most occasions, as I've mentioned before. If there's any pressing questions or concerns about our program, please feel free to contact me. I'm the local president here based in the Wairarapa on 27 We have our email info at ahmedia.org.nz. We are also reachable on our toll free number 0800 letter Y Islam 0800 Y I S L A M. With that note, we are coming to the conclusion of our day's program. I hope our listeners and viewers have taken the most of today to understand some of the short um, glimpses of uh, the life of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. We are here to serve humankind. We are here to worship one God. If we all get together, and my urge to the people of Wairarapa, let's get together, let's get behind this big uh, drive, I should say, that will allow us to reach or help the mankind of this universe. Let's have one voice together to stop the atrocities that we see in the world we are superpowers using nuclear war to suppress people. Let's educate those leaders in this world that they feel power is the way to go. No. Love is the way to go. Compassion is the way to go. We want to promote a peaceful society, a loving society, where people can live in harmony, practice their religion in harmony, be who they are. Be that human being. Forget race, color, creed or religion. Let's be human first. Once we understand what humanity is, then we can endeavor towards uh, getting the peaceful world that we want to live in. With that note, Kiora, I... I'm ever so grateful again to Michael and his team here at Aero FM who give us the hour slot to come and talk about the peaceful society of the Muslim, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community of New Zealand. We are one and the whole purpose of this program is to bring unity, is to promote peace and we can be seen in the society as an ever-loving and peaceful community towards our, our human beings. With that, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be upon you. Please enjoy the rest of your day and have a lovely weekend. Thank you. <laughs>